guys, welcome back to another episode of Booze Reviews in Black and White. Today we have a wine. What do you know, Domika? Nothing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <clears throat> this is a Zinfandel of Orange Spliff's Saldo. Now, <clears throat> if you, yeah, we haven't done a wine in forever, so I don't have my wine. I know, we're just not. <laughs> We're starting to get in the mood, though. Yes, we are. Drink a lot of wine this summer. So this Zinfandel um, is California-based. It's roughly 80% Zinfandel and 20% a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, Petite Syrah, Syrah, yeah. and uh, Grenache. Yes. Um, and actually, the 2010, uh, we know exactly what it's made of. But this is the 09 coming in at 15.5% alcohol by volume. Um, you may not be able to find it on the shelves now, but you can find the 2010. It's going to be somewhat similar. It's going to be a little bit higher octane at 15.9. Uh, yeah. um, but yeah, Eric Solomon. No, uh, no Orange, Orange Swift. Swift. <coughs> I don't know Eric Solomon came into my head. But uh, Orange, Swift Orange Swift is, uh, you know, anything you see his name on, for one, is, is probably going to be a good wine. Um, as you can see, he's got really obscure eclectic looking labels uh, this one just looks like the little tape machine little <laughs> labeler tape labeler little name tag saldo tape yeah, yeah and that's it like so simple so clean yeah. it's elegant uh some of his other uh labels like uh papillon uh, if you guys saw uh the movie papillon with dustin hoffman and I forget the other guy. Sorry, don't yell at me. No idea. Um, no idea. But he's got the butterfly, because I think that's what Papillon means, is butterfly in French. Don't quote me on that. But he's got the finger tattoos that say Papillon, and it's like this. Oh, yeah. That's the label. It's so cool. Anyways, look it up, orangeswift.com. Uh, you can check out all of his other wines, too. Uh, Palermo and The Prisoner are two of his other big... Uh, massively sought after wine. So, so like, let's go. Well, what happened here is the winemaker of Prisoner did so well with Prisoner, they allowed this guy to go off to the northern <coughs> counties of California and pull uh, the resources from some of the best wineries up there. Pulled together this <coughs> in. Let's dive into the nose. Enough talking. Yes. Uh, I should know. Uh, go ahead. I said enough oh. talking. Yeah, I know. Um, the winemaker and owner of Orange Swift is uh his name is Dave Finney, P H I N N E Y, I believe. So if you guys are ever out in California, you run into that dude, shake his hand for me <laughs> because he has never done me wrong. nose is bringing about uh, a wonderful elegance uh, I'm getting almost like a candied raspberries uh, raspberry preserve uh, sort of scent to it uh, very deep and elegant a uh, little bit of cocoa too like a cocoa dust something like that <coughs> excuse me I'm like inhaling alcohol here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, raspberry, cherry, big, bold red fruits up top. Um, a little bit of black currant. Almost, uh, I don't want to say a spice like fennel, but there's something there that's just kind of green almost. I can see that, yeah. The cocoa dust is there, the white pepper, the black pepper. Very... Very nice, uh, bold nose. Uh, oh, for you sure. don't have to search very hard to find something mm -hmm. you like about this thing. Right, I'm ready yeah. to sip it. Good God. <laughs> I know Easter was yesterday, <clears throat> but don't get offended because this might be Jesus in a glass. Good <laughs> God. 
Um, so I did want to give a shout out to Alisa. Is it Alisa or Alyssa? Sorry. Um, I've actually always wondered that because at any rate, uh, bros from New Jersey. New Jersey in the house. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been talking on Facebook about some of the Orange Swift wines and, um, she actually went out and found one. I, I believe it was the Saldo. Um, so yeah, let me know if you found the, tw uh, the 09 or the 2010. Uh, that would be kind of cool. So I figured, you know, hey, if she can do it, we can do it. These wines aren't cheap. I just want <laughs> they're about 30 bucks a bottle. Um, but if you're running out there picking up like Ron Bauer's Infandel, stuff like that, uh, sure. Clinker Brick, um, yeah. You gotta spend the money and get it. This is actually one of the more cheaper Orange Swift <clears throat> yeah, wines it is. too. So if you're looking to start maybe in the Warren Swift line, this would be a good one to try. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a really nice dustiness to this in. Um, it's not really, it's not really a fatty, super velvety one. It's it's got nice elegance to it. Uh, it's got a little bit of rusticness to it, but it's also very well layered. Um, See, I get intense, in-your-face, jamminess, fruitiness, a little bit of that chocolate. But by the time you hit the chocolate, it starts to show its sophistication. It starts to show its layers and kind of plays with you a little bit. Now we're going to go this way. Now we're going to go that way. We're going to juke left. We're going to juke right. Actually, left, right. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Dude, get tackled so easy. This is our first Terrible. time drinking too. It's quite sad. Uh, well, see, what I'm getting is I'm getting a lot of hard acids back in the tongue there. Um, not so much the soft on the side. Um, it, it almost seems like a lighter body to me, um, but it's still bringing a lot of intense fruits. I'm not saying that it's like a lax wine. It's you know no flavor profile. No, it's it's very well layered and so forth. But I think there's a lot of hard acidity to it it's almost uh it's almost like terroir driven in a way except for it, it doesn't bring about a whole bunch of earth just a little bit you know i get the terroir um <clears throat> but like you were saying earlier i think you had mentioned that he's sourcing these fruits from a bunch of different counties uh in california so I guess that's kind of what I was trying to say when it's kind of playing with you a little bit. Um, you know, some of you guys will know um, some fruit from uh, Lodi Valley um, are going to be huge, you know, punching you in the mouth. You get a little bit of that. You get, you know, some of the Napa Zen, some, you know, some of the Sonoma County. It changes on you. Um, and I think this works really well. Um, I will note that uh, this was aged in French and American oak. 20% uh, <clears throat> new oak. Yeah, 20% of that uh, of that time was new oak. So There's a little hint of that chocolatey, oaky thing happening too. Yeah, so. definitely. I think oh, that makes a huge difference. It's a very nice finish. Um, I'm liking this wine, especially if it was uh, paired up with a nice beefy steak. I think it's got the acids for it. I think it could stand up to something whole, wholesome and hearty. Um, you could even take like a thick cream sauce with it. And it could stand up to that as well. Um, I think I'm going to rate this guy 93. I really like it. It, it goes down a, a lot different road than a lot of the Zins I've had. Um, but it does it well. Um, it's complex. It's a little bit more acidic rather than velvety. Uh, but it still brings about an elegance and a smoothness, dustiness, to rusticness. I mean, all these different characteristics. And it's and it's a good one. Yeah. See, I'm not getting as much of that acid. It's weighty to me, like almost a medium body. Right. I think this is a, I mean, seriously, the fruit stands up, then it kind of relaxes. Uh, that oakiness kind of kicks in, a little bit of vanilla, uh, that, that chocolate, coffee, tobacco leaf, uh, tea leaves, like black tea, like the, the stuff that's being aged and dry, uh, the good stuff. 
uh, all kind of shine in this in this wine which you know I know I just said a bunch of things but that layering I mean one by one by one by just sure. kind of transitions one flavor to another um, I think yeah you're right definitely a steak with this for a sure. grilled steak with this um, a nice I mean yeah that that's kind of odd you know for a Zinfandel right. to be paired with a steak uh, at least out loud anyway uh, <laughs> well yeah I, I mean usually you think like barbecue yeah, or something like exactly. this but this almost brings about like a cabas mm -hmm. uh, you know sense to it I think. exactly uh, Cabernet drinkers uh, Zinfandel sure. for sure yeah. <laughs> that was for you Elisa <laughs> uh, so yeah anyways all right um, I I'm gonna give it one more swig one more little walkthrough you want to talk about something and then I'll read it um, I don't know what to talk about. Uh, it's the weather's getting great. Uh, it's actually baseball opener today, so for all those baseball fans out there, um, I was actually was at the bring my car into the shop watching the Twins game playing <laughs> Detroit, and their asses handed to them. I mean, good <coughs> lord, I didn't even I quit after like the Detroit fifth was winning. Oh yeah. Yeah, they, they were just getting their asses. That's a they couldn't do anything. Or pitch Not that Detroit isn't a good team. Oh, no, they're, they're a decent team. It's uh, 30 degrees out here. Oh, I know. That's Open was... Stadium, this is our home turf. How come the Twins? Oh, man. And and not to mention that freaking shadow. I mean, that was yeah. insane. I, I mean, it imagine. just covered like half the field. How could you play in that? I mean, it's just like <laughs> you step into the shadow. It's like pitch black. I don't know. You can tell we're, we're still new to the whole <laughs> Open Stadium deal here in Minnesota. We're used to the toilet dome. Yeah, you know? we're used to the dome. So, uh, yeah, well, there. that's been big news, actually, this whole week. Um, you know, highs in the 30s, like low 30s, 31 or 32, I think, is what it made it to uh, today. So, it wasn't very springy out. And I guess there was a lot of empty seats in the stadium, too, apparently. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, they're selling them for, like, 8 bucks now. Oh, that's their cheapest yeah. seat. But... Oh. Give us a week. Weather's going to be 50s, 60s, possibly. I'll be golfing, and the Twins will be kicking some tail. So what are you thinking? Seems like you're enjoying it, at least. I am, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, the layering is absolutely fantastic. Um, there is some acidity there. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot you know, to punch me in the face. But definitely needs to be paired with something solid, something robust, uh, a grilled flank steak sliced, you know, with whatever sauce, you, however you want to eat it, um, a nice sirloin if you want, whatever. And anyways, I'm, I'm going to stop talking. Um, I'm going to give this, yeah, I'm going to give it 95 points. 95. Um, it was all that and a bag of chips straight up. It would go perfect with a bag of chips. It would. Uh, yeah, the Orange Swift wine, folks, um, orangeswift.com. Definitely look it up. Um, <clears throat> he's got a bunch of other wines on there that you guys should definitely check out. Um, I've had the Palermo Prisoner and um, Papillon personally. Uh, I've heard the ma the mannequin was really good. Uh, it was a white wine. Oh, that's right. I yeah, never had mannequin. it. I didn't get to have it. I didn't either. It was like 50 bucks a bottle for a white wine. It's pretty I, expensive white. <laughs> that was, yeah. That was out of my range. But, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. 95, you gave it 93. 93, yeah. Great wine. Check it out. Um, again, you know, follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Subscribe here on YouTube. Absolutely. And wine drinkers, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we're going to have some more wines coming your yeah, way. Yeah, we know we kind of abandoned wine for a little bit there. Because uh, beer's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, that and we were, we were kind of in a dark beer phase. So. Yeah. Right. Thanks for sticking with us. Man. Absolutely. we got to get back to it. We will catch you guys on the flip.